I'm standing right here in front of the Fort Whiting Armory. With me now is Alabama Governor Fob James. I see a lot of tired men around here. How are they, how are they holding up? Holding up fine, uh, and they will continue to hold up. Uh, how long are you telling them that they may be down here in Mobile? Uh, throughout uh, next week. Uh, hopefully we can, uh, we, we, are, we are planning to accelerate as high as necessary, and, and of course we hope we can level off early in the week and maybe start drop off some by the end of next week. Uh, basically, uh, uh, now we, uh, we want to secure uh, all areas that uh, where uh, local forces need to be supplemented, uh, city police, uh, sheriff's department, uh, and they uh, incidentally, I want to say in my judgment, done a, a tremendous job, your local people. Uh, then we get into massive cleanup, uh, and of course concurrent with that is repair of roads and bridges, uh, and this goes hand in glove with the uh, utility situation, uh, power, water, gas, and all of that is being brought along. Uh, uh, the federal people will be coming in in the morning uh, with respect to loans uh, for people to repair their homes, <coughs> temporary shelter in the form of trailers, food, medicine, those sort of things if necessary. Are you still bringing in men? <coughs> we will bring in another, uh, probably another 100 additional MPs that will be in uh, late tonight or early in the morning to take us through the weekend. There's a rumor out that a Navy ship is coming with approximately 700 men on it. Is there any truth to that? I have not had that confirmed, uh, uh, I, I, so I don't know. How long do you think you'll be down here? Uh, oh, throughout the weekend, I'm sure. But uh, we've got a rebuilding job to do, and the sooner we get started, uh, the better off we're going to be. Thank you very much. I'm Jack Kendrick with Governor James in front of the Fort Whiting Armory. Back to the studio. I see you tomorrow. Workers from the County Work Release Center have spent all day passing out free water stored in these milk containers. The water has been available at at least two locations in Mobile, here at Spring Hill Shopping Center and the filter plant on Moffett Road. Close to 2,000 people showed up for water here today. All of them had different stories about what their own water was like. Right now we have water, but uh from what I have heard on uh, radio and TV that the water might be contaminated, so I have a young child and everything, and I would like to have some good water for them to drink. Well, I live out in the Crichton area, and the water situation is clear, but I understand that it's contaminated. We don't have water. My parents don't either. None at all? No. Uh, I don't have much pressure. I have water, though, but you're scared to drink it because you don't know what's, you know, in it. You don't know what problem. That's what does correct. the water look like? It's a dark color. It's not, uh, it's not as clear as it usually is. In my home, so far, it's fine. But there are other areas that I've been through. It's a disaster. I saw people getting out ditches. Uh, we have no water in Forest Hill area whatsoever. There are indications, though, the stored water won't be needed much longer. John Van Sprecken is superintendent of the county water service system. He says a large pump was installed today in West Mobile, and water service should resume there sometime this evening. If you are still without water, though, and you can't get to where stored water is being passed out, there are two ways to purify water that's available to you. You can either boil it for 15 minutes or put two drops of Clorox bleach in it. Taylor Henry, News Center 5. Area law enforcement authorities have been given orders to deal with looters severely. And looting has continued in some areas. It appears that many juveniles are ignoring the order. In Mobile and Pritchard, that could be dangerous, for the law officers are interpreting severely as meaning fire two warning shots, then shoot to kill. Pritchard Police Chief A.G. Hildreth told me today there have been scattered reports of looting, and his people are locking them up. The suspected looters will remain in jail until a judge is summoned to determine bond. Uh, right now we're waiting for a judge to set the bond. We haven't been able to contact the judges yet to set the bond, but we are holding some of those looters at this time. We are going to uh, enforce the laws, and we are going to enforce the court for you, and we are going to prevent this looting. Armed guards are patrolling, and no one is being allowed to enter the business areas without proper identification. Several persons have been caught with merchandise in their possession. Mobile's police are not asking too many questions. If you're violating the curfew without valid reason, you're being arrested. Again, that curfew remains in effect tonight. 
I'm Mel Showers reporting News Center 5. The Red Cross is trying to feed as many of you who need help. But there's a problem. People are walking into the Red Cross headquarters, walking out with food the Red Cross is trying to get to distribution centers. And that makes helping others a tough job. We're getting food out into the area from the chapter here in our mobile feeding units. And uh, contrary to what people believe, we don't have ice here. We don't have all the modern conveniences. We are without power. We're running on two emergency generators for uh, the supplies that we are getting out. And uh, what we don't need people to do is come down and hamper our efforts to get our mobile feeding bands out into the areas to feed people that need to be fed. Red Cross members ask you to please stay away from their office so as not to hamper efforts to help people who play by the rules, those who wait their turn for much needed food and water. Glenda Webb, New Center 5. County officials began allowing Pensacola Beach residents back onto Santa Rosa Island shortly after 8 this morning. However, because work crews were trying to restore electricity to the island, they were held up at the commercial section of the beach. The shops there weathered the storm with little or no damage. Most of the pier, however, was gone. What is left may have to be torn down. Once residents on the Gulf side of the beach returned to their homes, they saw what little was left. This is just one of 27 homes in the state. To strive can't bring their cars back to what's left of their homes, there's up to about a foot of sand still on the street. But when they do finally trudge back on foot, they'll realize that they have been the worst hit on the beach. Len and Joy Bethany live one house away from the Gulf. Their large awning crashed down, destroying a good deal of the building. Joy Bethany says they consider themselves lucky. The worst damage is to the interior. The uh, rising water inside came up um, a foot and a half or two feet on our furniture and um, the veneer is going and gone and there's a lot of moisture in the whole house, the drapes. We're going to work all day and get as much done. We've called the insurance company and um, go back to town, spend the night and come back and work again tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. The Bethany's will have to stop their work by 8 o'clock tonight. That's when the beach curfew begins. Other areas in the southwestern part of the county will also be under an 8 p.m. curfew. They are Sea Glades, Grand Lagoon, Perdido Key, Inerarity Island, Queen of Vista, Treasure Hill, and Gulf Beach. City police arrested 28-year-old Randolph Williams for looting this shoe store early this morning. It was only the fifth looting arrest in the county, but police report a rapid rise in burglaries. When dawn broke this morning, 50,000 homes in the county were without power. Most of them should have electricity by later tonight. Dr. John Langley was pulled out of the intercoastal waterway near Perdido Key Wednesday night. He and 24-year-old Marianne Dickerson were trying to ride out of the hurricane when they were swept overboard. She is still missing. The city of Pensacola did announce one break for homeowners. They won't be charging any extra to pick up all the extra trash left behind by Frederick. Peter Casella, New Center 5, Pensacola. If you were looking for gas today, you had to look at the end of a line like this first. There were various stations around the city pumping out gasoline, but most of them were only running one or two pumps. That's because the power to run the pumps was coming from small generators like this. Because the pumps were constantly in use, this station had to periodically cool off the pump motor. And as it turns out, they had to cool a few hot tempers too. There's been some uh, tense moments when, when you could feel that the people were getting irritable. Uh, I think the basic reason for that is because we've had some people butt in line. And, um, and it's, it's, it's been right, kind of rough to, to deal with people like that. But most customers were reasonable, and all of them were grateful once they got gasoline. Oh, yeah, when you're about out of gas, you need, you got to, you know, wait in line to get it. Are you headed out of town or what? Not right now, but uh, it might be a little later. We uh, needed the gas real bad, so we have to wait in line. What do you need it for? Well, for chainsaws in the car. Uh, I hadn't been anywhere ever since they was talking about the storm, and I uh, didn't have a chance to pick up any, you know, get in anywhere. And 
I went all over the place yesterday, all the way up to McIntosh, Alabama, and everything was out everywhere. So this is kind of last resort to get gas? Right. But these aren't the only lines that people are sitting in today. They're out in front of banks, food stores, drug stores, and of course, in front of the ice houses. These people waited all day to buy ice at the Crystal Ice Company. Most of them were still waiting when the ice ran out. But knowing that more was being shipped in, they decided to wait it out. They left New Orleans at 20 minutes to 9 this morning. There's more ice coming from Atlanta at 7 o'clock in the morning. But that's the situation. There's nothing I can do to change it. If I could, I would. I'm going to wait till I get some more ice. That's it. That's all I can do. How long are you prepared to wait? Well, I'm, it will stay all night till I get some ice. Yeah. I spent over $100 for vegetables uh, within the last two months to put in my deep freeze to have some through the winter. And that's gone kaloo. So it means more to me for me to stay and try to get some ice. But some customers were not so patient. That's why police and guardsmen were on duty at most locations selling ice. At this A&P store on Sage and Dauphin, what some called a near riot began this morning. But police and guardsmen were called in and broke it up quickly. Nerves were on edge for everyone there, but especially for this guardsman. Yes, every time I somebody in line look at name on my shirt, they'd, they'd uh, say I was to blame for all this mess they got into. into. Needless to say, this is no time to be flaunting a name like Frederick. Janet Hall, New Center 5. When grocery stores opened this morning, customers were anxious to shop for items they needed or wanted. Canned goods, soft drinks, distilled water, batteries, candles, charcoal, and bread were at the top of the list. What are the things that the people are buying mostly? Well, mostly essential canned goods, uh, charcoal, charcoal starter. We don't have any ice. Everybody wants ice, uh, juice, Cokes, liquid, cigarettes, film, just anything really they can buy. Did you stock up before the hurricane with food? Yeah, mostly we did. Um, we have a lot of canned stuff that, you know, that has to be heated, but we bought a lot of um, foods that you could open without having to heat and all. So why are you shopping today? What did you need to pick up? Bread, bananas, and things like that and some milk for coffee. I gotta have my coffee. <laughs> you have a lot of baby products in your basket. My grandchild needs them desperately. Well, we've been had a lot of damage and been busy today. We're just gonna stay open until we can get some of our customers to meet their needs in here. And then we're gonna try to shut back down, clean up a little bit more, and then try to reopen by tomorrow again. Stores are using generators to run lights, refrigeration units, and cash registers. Why are some stores able to offer more food items than others? It all goes back to the power problem. Some have more or bigger generators than others. Those grocery stores with out-of-town warehouses have better access to food items than those stores with local warehouses. One thing they all have in common is their attitude. We're just trying to help the people and glad to do it. Debbie Fabian, News Center 5. If you're concerned your water is contaminated, two ways to make sure it's safe to drink have been suggested. Either boil the water for 15 minutes or put two drops of Clorox bleach in each quart you use. Preliminary testing shows there's no evidence the public water supply is contaminated. Tests are still being conducted and the results should be announced sometime this weekend. If you don't have a way to boil water and have no Clorox, County Commissioner Bay Hayes says it's okay to assume the water you have is safe to drink. He and Water Service Superintendent John Von Sprecken are working together on water problems in Mobile County. Mr. Von Sprecken and myself and we've met with the Board of Health people. Uh, we have no, the, the, there may be some contamination in some of the water systems. Uh, the Mobile City water system, there's no evidence of contamination at all. But, you know, if you, if it's, you could boil the water, you, it would, that would purify it. Or if you, you could put two drops of Clorox or household bleach per quart of water to, to ensure yourself against any possible problem. Mr. Montrecken, would you? Uh, I think that uh, it's, uh, there are places that we are having some difficulty with as far as the whole county. I don't believe that there's any problems in the city of Mobile. We're running chlorine tests and bacteriological tests at the present time. We indicate that we have a sufficient amount of chlorine in the water but uh, so that everybody in, in the community 
will not get the wrong idea or anything else. In other words, somebody may be getting water from someplace other than us and think that they are. So they, to assure themselves that they are getting good water, they should either boil it or put the two drops of Clorox in it. The people having the biggest problem with drinking water are those who've got private wells. Many of them have no water at all. For those who don't have water, Hayes says officials are in the process of getting large supplies of water into the Mobile area. That water will be distributed tomorrow at sites that will be announced then. Taylor Henry, News Center 5. President Carter came to meet with local and state officials and get a first-hand look at the damage. But even before he saw it, he knew that Hurricane Frederick had devastated the Gulf Coast. He even predicted that the area will receive more aid than it did for Hurricane Camille. Ten years ago, 250 people lost their lives. But because of the evacuation techniques and the quick action on the part of Governor James and the other governors involved, we've had serious loss of life, but so far as I know, only nine people. This is too much, obviously, but it's much better than the 250 that could have occurred had this action not been taken. From Mobile, the president left by helicopter to tour the coast, beginning in Pascagoula, Mississippi. From there, he worked his way east to places like Dolphin Island, Alabama, where the only bridge to the mainland was almost completely wiped out. Here, like in all other areas along the coast, many homes were destroyed. But over in Gulf Shores, there were few buildings to see, Frederick wiped out nearly 95% of them. Many officials agree that this is probably where the worst damage occurred. But as Carter crossed the line into Florida, the scene looked pretty much the same. Most houses on the beach were either damaged or demolished. The president landed in Pensacola after surveying the destruction for over two hours. Leaders from Northwest Florida lined up to shake his hand. When he finally reached the podium, he assured the crowd that the federal government will do all it can to help out. The damage is extremely severe, and the federal commitment to helping all of you and all those who were damaged repair what has been done and restore the quality of your lives is complete and it's permanent. From Pensacola, the president left for Washington on Air Force One. The response here in Pensacola would indicate that the president has scored some needed political points by coming here. But now many of these people are returning to damaged homes, and they will wait to see if the federal government can react as fast as the president has promised. Jack Kendrick, News Center 5 in Pensacola. Spent the night in a vault in the office there. Uh, soon, soon, soon as the roof started going in the back end, we figured that would be the safest place for us to get. How did you get the combination to the vault? A uh, boss called and gave it to us. I just told him I hope it floated. It was just 25 of us laying on the floor, held all of us on top of each other. In the living room, in the kitchen, window came out, and we had a chair chopped, you know, to the door. And that was it. We just prayed. I heard glass flying part of the roof. So I just prayed to the good Lord to take care of me and went back to sleep, and he did. I was afraid to look out the window, but the wind was terrified. Uh, the roof, part of the roof came off, and several windows was broken. But you were under some mattresses. Right. The bedroom uh, in the corner with a pillow <laughs> uh, with my sister, as well as my brother. Where in the church did you spend the night? In the... Uh... On the preacher's day. Did you have mattresses covering you up? No, we had sheets when we went to sleep. Were you there with some other people? Uh-huh, my family. Were you frightened? No. Were the winds very bad? Yeah, you could hear it whistle and blow the church wind out. The Coca machine, uh, uh, Coca-Cola machine. So you were behind the Coke machine? I was in my bedroom, laying across the bed. I left the bedroom, went into the kitchen, and then all of a sudden when I turned back around, everything was down for us, the bedroom, the living room, and then I went in the bathroom and I stayed in the bathroom, so after, afterward the wind came and took half my bathroom door off, 
Then I was frightened, so I left. Jumped out the bell tub. After the wall, that came down. We didn't do anything, you know. Sat around in candlelight after the power went out. Well, the roof came off around 10 o'clock, 9 or 10 o'clock, and I was in the back walk-in cooler. And uh, the cooler that I, we had two coolers. We had a large one and a small one, and I got in the large one, and it's the one that collapsed. The small one stayed, stayed up, but uh, it collapsed in such a way that it gave me room to crawl out from underneath it. Were you very frightened? Yes, <laughs> but I was with my husband. I wasn't too frightened because he was with me. There's my husband. Talk to him. Okay, we were in the bedroom, and the, the, the bed kept sh moving back and forth as the house was shaking right during the storm, back and forth. And we didn't know what we thought it was going to, we thought the house was going to fly away, but it didn't come close, but we scared to death. And you were in this bed that was shaking? Yes, we were, uh -huh. both of us, me and my wife. <laughs> Not you and me. Ladd Stadium has seen thousands of people during its time, mostly those gathered to watch a sports event. But today, a crowd of hundreds were drawn for something we normally take for granted every day, ice. No. Would you give it up? No. Well, get my ice up. Wait this long, I'm gonna keep my well, How much is that ice worth to you now? Lots, I guess. Did you wait a long time to get that? Yes, ma'am. Would you give it up? <laughs> no, I would not. The reason ice is so precious is because most of you are without electricity, and spoiled food is useless. So you can imagine how this crowd felt when they were told earlier all they would be getting was charcoal. The cold people. Hey, everybody come here wasn't organized when they pulled the truck in here. Organized. They, 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 they pulled when they, wait, wait. When they pulled that truck hey, in here, hold up, man. Wait, wait. When they pulled that truck in here, they expected this to happen. They pull in there. They don't say you got the same problem over there, man. Wherever they going. Wait, 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 wait. Y'all are doing this. It ain't us. It ain't us. It ain't us. We just all the meat going back out. It ain't us. It's y'all. Y'all just haul a truck out here. Ain't no bags. 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 Ain
Some of the businesses here on Highway 90 going into Pascagoula were close to being swept away completely. The shopping centers took a lot of punishment from the storm, and today various store owners and employees were busy putting what they could back together. It was the same story for marina employees, who faced the task of pulling boats out of collapsed shelters. On Market Street, the main drag through downtown Pascagoula, one of the classrooms at Pascagoula High School is missing a roof, while most windows in the school have been blown out. Down the street, a church steeple is laying on the ground, and here a mass of power lines and poles are left dangling. And as expected, there are lines of people waiting for gas and ice here, too. The residential areas in Pascagoula did suffer some damage, but were not hurt as badly as the business district. But the residential damage here in Moss Point seems to be more severe. Much of that is because of the large trees that Moss Point is known for. Some houses had as many as seven to eight trees on the house and countless more down in their yards. Moss Point was also hit by Hurricane Camille, but those who saw both say it was not as bad as Frederick. Camille was full of water, but Frederick was full of wind, and that is what turns trees over. Moss Point also experienced the calm during the eye of the storm. Charles Mitchell tells what that was like. Just like this, not as just perfect calm, just perfect calm. No wind at all. Is that strange feeling? Or? That's right. That's right. Just like a vacuum. <laughs> Mississippians are facing much of the same battle we are facing here in Alabama, and it appears they are using the same tools to fight it, patience and hard work. Reporting from Mississippi, Janet Hall, News Center 5. Gasoline lines like this one are continuing to grow throughout the city. Gas supplies are good, and if people just continue to keep their cool, there'll be plenty enough for everyone. How are you getting your pumps to operate here? I have a generator that a customer of mine allowed me to use. What are you charging for gas? Uh, 99.9, a dollar three, and a dollar five. Are those the same prices before the hurricane? Yeah. Yes, they are. Are you finding customers getting irritable about having to wait in line? Mm, no, not under the circumstances. They're a little irritated, but nothing unruly. Lynn Dossett says the company is supplying his station with unlimited allocations due to the disaster situation. And although his customers are hungry, thirsty, and tired, they're putting up with this additional inconvenience. We left the house about 7 o'clock this morning trying to find gas, and I was told several stations was open, and this was the closest one in my neighborhood, so I decided to come here. Actually, we've been here about 9 o'clock in the waiting line trying to get gas. But only that I know of is in an area, is only three, about three stations open. We stopped at uh, seven or six stations, and it was said it was giving gas only to the Red Cross, and another Texaco station was open, but the line was so long, so I didn't, didn't even, you know, stop to go in. Everybody seemed to be taking it pretty cool and, you know, everything seemed to be well as usual, I guess. The only major problem, according to station owner Dossett, is that many of you people are buying gas and using it unwisely, like driving around to sightsee, which is one thing the police are urging you not to do. Jenna Neville, News Center 5. Paris deputies continued to oversee the evacuation. By noon, the island was deserted for the most part. There are a few here who are determined to stay. Oh, no, no, everything I got here, shop, house, and everything else, so I'm going to stay here to take care of it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've, I've been here for a long time, and I expect to be here longer. There are also a few here in Biola Battery who say they are going to stay and wait out the storm. But most residents here spent the morning preparing for the arrival of Frederick and were ready to leave town. 
Businesses in the downtown section were quickly boarded up, along with homes and churches. But for many fishermen here, the main concern is that of protecting their boats. Some have been anchored to the shore, while others were moved inland. Shortly after noon today, police, along with civil defense workers, began going door to door, warning residents that they must leave. I would hope we have everybody out by 3 o'clock. You think they will be? I hope so. I don't want anybody hurt. My job is, uh, of course, the safety of people and property, and, and we're taking all precautions. I'd rather have them out of here than wish that we did. In the next 30 to 40 minutes, we'll be gone. Mm -hmm. Would you ever think about staying here? No, ma'am. By no means, I wouldn't. Because I've seen enough Camille what it done. A 7 o'clock curfew has been placed on Biola Battery tonight. At that time, no one will be allowed to go back into the town. In Biola Battery, Janet Hall, News Center 5. In Jackson County, Mississippi, preparations have been taken for the hurricane by those who haven't forgotten Camille. Today, windows were covered with plywood or tape. These homes face Pascagoula Beach, the area that'll be hardest hit. Most people living along Pascagoula Beach here boarded up and left either yesterday or early today. This afternoon, tides were reported about three feet high and rising. And Pascagoula police say it's inevitable Beach Boulevard will be flooded. Almost a fourth of Jackson County's population of about 30,000 has been evacuated. Most people left for places north of the coast, but about 5,000 are at 20 schools, churches, and other buildings like the courthouse that have been set up as shelters. Evacuation began yesterday, so there were no real traffic problems, even though there are few access routes north from Pascagoula. Here at Ingalls Shipbuilding, workers went home early today. Only essential personnel, like security guards and maintenance people, are on duty here. Most other businesses and all schools were closed, too. But food and drug stores stayed open for last-minute shoppers seeking necessities. At the Jackson County Emergency Operations Center, workers have been coordinating emergency services. Ken Phillips is in charge. Well, uh, here in Jackson County, uh, we want everybody to uh, stay off of the streets unless it's absolutely uh, an emergency in the roads. Uh, if they're uh, at home, remain there and don't panic. Jackson County Emergency Service workers are broadcasting information live over local radio stations. Taylor Henry, News Center 5 in Pascagoula. The first stop for the governor was Gulf Shores. James owns a house here. But by the time he arrived late in the morning, the roads were already starting to flood. The governor was afraid many of the residents were not getting out fast enough, so he issued an executive order demanding that the shoreline areas be evacuated. And I'm most concerned that uh, some people are not concerned. And uh, it's very easy to stay where you are. Just 10 more minutes and then the roads are cut off and then we have no way to get to them. And then you've got a real problem and that's when you take heavy casualty and that's what we're trying to prevent. Is the state going to be ready with any kind of aid if and when that's going to be ready with everything, uh, everything we've got? Yes, sir. And that's what the governor told local leaders at the Mobile Civil Defense Headquarters, his next stop on the tour. The big concern here is the evacuation of people in low-lying areas. But most of the leaders say they've already done almost all that they can. I think the statements have been, have been good. They've been coordinated and very clear. And I think everybody who's... Uh, who has heard it in the public media is responding properly. Uh, I hope that uh, people are taking it seriously, but there are those who just are not even going to know about it. While the governor was gone from Baldwin County, Alabama state troopers were setting up their mobile command post in the Spanish Ford Shopping Center. The $100,000 communication center will coordinate most emergency personnel in Baldwin and Mobile counties. And since this van is powered by a generator, it can be moved almost anywhere. Governor James returned here late in the afternoon, and it's likely he will stay near the command post for the duration of the storm. Jack Kendrick, News Center 5 in Spanish Fort. Gulf Shores is best known as a resort town, but today at best, it resembles more of a ghost town. With the approach of Hurricane Frederick, the waves were getting higher and the people were getting fewer. The size of the waves here in Gulf Shores are about six to eight feet, and that's enough to convince about anyone to get out of here. Were you planning on evacuating? Uh, no, I wasn't. 
Uh, but, of course, the governor has now said for everybody to get out by 3 o'clock. Another factor that might have convinced Tommy Whiting to leave was the rising tide, and his plans for a hurricane party were canceled. Uh, I wanted to have one, but then uh, everyone's left, and it'd just be myself in the weather. I don't care to drink with the hurricane. Most residents evacuated Gulf Shores early this morning, and shelter is available at the Foley National Guard Armory. Jenna Neville, News Center 5. This is what it looked like just an hour ago outside our studios as gale force winds wound through downtown Mobile. Hurricane Frederick began pushing its winds into the Mobile area earlier this evening. And because of Frederick, a 36-year-old truck driver nearly plunged to his death when his tractor trailer ran off of Interstate 10 and dropped into Mobile Bay. Tommy Lee Rogers was standing on top of his truck cab as it bobbed in the bay. Rescuers lowered a rope to him and pulled him to safety. Meanwhile, city and state officials gathered earlier today to prepare for Frederick. Governor Fob James was here and said he'll stay in Spanish Fort to wait out the storm and tomorrow assess the damage. Uh, we have moved uh, uh, National Guardsmen, troopers, equipment uh, uh, north of here and uh, we start assessing what happens and then I think we'll be able to re react to it uh, very rapidly. Mobile Mayor Gary Greeno said Mobile is as prepared as it can be. I think, uh, I th my feeling is that our, uh, our plan is, is good. Uh, the, we're well organized, we're assessing the information, uh, we're making the decisions that need to be made as we move along, as we face them. And uh, everything, I, in my judgment, is in good order. And uh, this is a natural disaster. No one has real control over it. And you can never really be totally prepared. But uh, to the extent that we can, uh, I think we are. And I think our, our uh, program here is moving as well as could be reasonably expected. Pritchard Mayor A.J. Cooper called for Pritchard to be evacuated earlier today. And most people heeded his warning. In Mobile, Tomanville, and Trinity Gardens were some of the later areas ordered to evacuate. For all of us, it's going to be a long night. Beverly Count, News Center 5. Fifteen to 20,000 people are spending the night away from their homes in northwest Florida. But not everyone who should be in a safe shelter is. 120 people in Gulf Breeze are stranded there. They apparently refuse to obey Governor Graham's evacuation order. The Pensacola Bay Bridge, which connects the town with Pensacola, is closed, so those 120 people are forced to ride out the storm in Gulf Breeze. There have been only two minor injuries in the Pensacola area so far. Wind was the culprit in both. An ambulance driver was taken to Sacred Heart Hospital with back injuries after his vehicle was blown over on its side. The man was on an emergency call. And a boy required hospitalization after a store window in Softly Square blew out. All hospitals in Escambia County are remaining open throughout the night. Officials ask anyone who has been injured to go to the emergency room of the hospital nearest you. Gulf Power officials say 12 feeder lines are down in Escambia County. They have no idea yet how many people are without electricity. Repair crews will not attempt to repair the lines until the high winds let up. The Camelot apartment complex in Warrington was damaged when the screen of the Twin Air drive-in crashed down on it. No one was hurt. Earlier today, the 1,200-foot Pensacola Beach Pier was reduced to 200 feet. It took the high wind and seas nearly six hours to topple the 23-year-old structure. Several stretches of Santa Rosa Island have been completely flooded over. One county administrator, Rod Kendig, gave the evacuation notice at 8 this morning. Some beach residents left immediately without securing their houses and boarding up windows. They are now wondering just what they'll find when Frederick passes and they return home. Peter Casella, New Center 5, Pensacola.
we did have looting this morning. I called a ride back to Irvington to check. Yeah, right. I don't know. Ahead, I really don't know. We're probably. West, or westerly direction. So it could have been even blown past the boat because I had the boat to hold on to. But uh, it was just a matter of holding on and the boat ended up uh, with, a with a bow toward the shore and the bottom up. And, uh, Did you make any attempts to try to rescue Well, I know. The hurricane damage in Foley looks like many other inland towns in Baldwin County. Big trees were uprooted, houses crushed, trailers overturned, and power lines down. 
But the worst damage appears to have come from the tornadoes that came out of the hurricane. One of them touched down here, and that's all that's left, the Bryce Body Shop. And that same tornado apparently headed north in that direction, picking out other victims. A car dealership, and probably the worst damage of all, a clock company showroom. Manager Tom McDonald spent most of the day sifting through the rubble, hoping to find something to salvage among the $200,000 worth of expensive clocks. But unfortunately, there's very little worth saving here. There's some furniture back in there that's sad, sad, that we can take care of and fix up. It's okay. But these clocks in here are... Well, there's a rosewood clock in there that's had it. Retail uh -huh. for $2,600. But in the midst of all this tragedy, McDonald says there was at least some good news. Fortunately, no one was injured. Jack Kendrick, News Center 5 in Foley. Well, all these wonderful people are trying to help me salvage what I can. Uh, I got a whole livelihood invested here. Looks like it's all going to go down the drain. But we're going to try. We're going to try to come back. You have no, no intentions of giving up on it? No, I don't have any intentions of giving up. Okay. I know you were flying around the areas. What were your impressions of the worst areas along the coast? Well, the, uh, the coastal areas, uh, the Gulf Shores area was awfully hard hit as we saw the Nile. I mean, the lower the washes of sand and islands, and then when you have a wind, then that's when you got the most extensive damage. But uh, I think your coastal areas were the most extensively damaged, but we had. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of wrecked homes, uh, bridges torn out, roads, trees down, crops ruined, all over Baldwin and Mobile counties. So it's a disaster area, and it's been declared a disaster area. And what will this federal representative be doing here? Be getting uh, uh, federal help in here uh, when needed, filling out the forms, going through all of the detail that's necessary to release money to get things done. We've got to rebuild. Uh, Baldwin and Mobile County, and the sooner we start, the sooner we're going to get the job How done. How soon do you think we are going to be able to start rebuilding? Uh, we started areas? today, and uh, the it'll... The money's going to start coming in for this uh, soon? Well, the, that, that has been set up, but we started today, and it will accelerate each day from here out. How long we are you going to be been, here? We have been uh, named a disaster area, by the way. Yes. Uh, All right. Uh -huh. uh, sir. He just said we've been named... Yeah. One of the...